Hi friends, this is Agnello Rajesh here, Chairman for St. Angelo's VNC Ventures. We are India's largest villa developers developing villas at Thane, Chennai, Madurai, Coimbatore and Hyderabad. Advantage of buying villas with us is, we give you rental returns after you buy the villa and the maintenance is zero. You don't have to put money nor efforts to maintain the villa. Where progressive rental returns ensures that after you buy the villa, EMI or the loan repayment for the villa is offset by the rental returns that we generate. For more details, visit us on www savvglobal.com I don't think I could have been anything else but an entrepreneur and I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying myself. I worked with a television channel, I worked with a magazine, I worked with an event company. I did the whole process till I figured that this is what I like and this is what I'm probably going to be good at. A producer's job is mainly to see and make sure that the director's needs are met in the best way possible. With the movies, there is no trend. So we were the first guys to do it and take it to the platform and we world premiered at Cannes and it just came together really beautifully. Hi friends, this is Agnello Rajesh here. I'm chairman for St. Angelo's VNC Ventures and Inspiring Conversations is a concept which is very close to our hearts as our social give back to the entrepreneurial world. Today is the 41st episode of Inspiring Conversations and Inspiring Conversations is a concept where we learn from the experiences of others, where they have been, what they have done and we would like to understand the success anecdotes that they could achieve along their journey of success. So today's guest with us is Ashidua, a very young and a very enterprising entrepreneur who started at the age of 17. Hi Ashi. Hi sir, thank you. So how is it being till now and uh, how do you enjoy being an entrepreneur? I don't think I could have been anything else but an entrepreneur and I'm really uh, happy that I get to do what I get to do. I feel very grateful and very lucky that I chose this uh, path for myself and I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying myself. Yeah. So you are a film producer today and film production is nothing but an event going on. Yes. Uh, there are two kinds of events. One are events which are live watched by audience and the other event is one which you shoot on a camera and make it into a film. Yeah. So you are a successful film producer. Uh, what made you choose film production as a line of business? Well, um, to be completely honest, I also discovered through my process in the whole media uh, world when I started at 17, I worked with a television channel, I worked with a magazine, I worked with an event company. I did the whole process till I figured that this is what I like and this is what I'm probably going to be good at. And hence I chose this and I'm still on my path and I feel like I have a long way to go uh, to be called a successful producer. But yes, I've begun my journey and uh, I'm, I'm quite enjoying it now. So when you began your journey, your first step itself with Bombay Talkers was working with the best brains of the industry. Yes. When you talk about uh, Zoya or when you talk about Anurag Kashyap or Karan Johar or Dibankar, these are considered to be the best brains in the industry. How could you motivate them to come on board with you on a concept that you were just launching? I was lucky. Um, the timing was right. And it was just about getting all these energies together. Like I've said it multiple times before, I came back and it was 2013 and India was going to have its 100th year of Indian cinema. And I was fortunate to meet um, Mr. Anurag Kashyap, who's very, very motivating for people like us who come from small towns and who want to do something. And I told him about my idea and he, I said, will you do a short film for me? And he said, yes. And so on and so forth. He came on board first and then I got the other three filmmakers and we ended up doing Bombay Talkies, which was uh, decently well uh, received. Fantastic. So business is all about storytelling. Either you tell a story to your customer or your investor or your vendor or your partner. So what is the exact pitch that you gave to these best people from the industry where they agreed to back up the project that you had already decided? I wanted them to make a film on something that inspired them to want to make films while they were growing up or while they wanted to be filmmakers. So if you see all the four stories, I don't know if you've seen the film, but all the four stories, like Anurag's story is about the memory that he had when he moved to Bombay about people standing outside Mr. Bachchan's house on every Sunday. Or Zoya's story was about how dance inspired her and how while growing up she would see all these dance numbers and all of that. Karan's story was about how music moved him. Uh, Dibakar's story was about how a common man wanted to be an actor and, and so on. So I told them that, you know, why don't you guys make a film which motivated you guys to make films. And that really, I think, excited them. And the concept of short films, it hadn't been done as much in India. So we were the first guys to do it and take it to the platform and we world premiered at Cannes. And, it just came together really beautifully and I think that was one of the reasons why they wanted to do this. Fantastic. So every uh, industry has customers, including film industry and India has got the 
most economical format of entertainment for below 100 rupees you can entertain yourself for three hours that happens only in India because of the huge size of population that we have and the films today are going uh, great guns big blockbusters in fact Bollywood is tipped to be bigger than Hollywood in this kind of an industry when how do you envisage a viewer how do you envisage a film goer on what he will appreciate and how do you take that into consideration before you finalize a script for him India is such a vast country and even a lower middle class person or a middle class person, they all aspire to now watch movies in multiplexes. And multiplexes, to go and have a family experience at the multiplex is expensive and not everybody can afford it. So I think people are very wise. They're choosing the kind of films that they want to watch in the theatre now. Something that's going to give them the experience that they want, something that they're going to thoroughly enjoy or something that they've heard about through word of mouth that it's phenomenal. So in that respect when like we did Lust Stories we moved it to Netflix and we were very fortunate to have a platform like Netflix and it was very well received. So sometimes you just realize that this sort of a film is going to work better on a platform like Netflix where your target audience is there and uh, people might not want to come to the theatre to watch a film like that. So you have to take that call yourself and you don't have to be delusional about it that you know anything that's going to work in the theatre because it's really expensive to watch a film in the theatre now. So there are completely made for theatre and then there are films which are completely made for platforms like this who are giving us the opportunity to reach a global audience sitting in our homes and our TG is right there. So when we made um, Lust Stories and now that we are doing Ghost Stories after Lust Stories, we are very fortunate to have a platform like Netflix where our audience is right there. And and when I do make a film for the theatre, I will, I will be very careful about what is it that I want to put out there which will go theatrically. So you, you decide that with the content that you're making. How do you embark on a new project? Because how do you study competition? How do you study the trends that's going on? As an entrepreneur, we are always alert on what's happening in the industry. Typically, uh, your competition might not be from your same sector. Like that's what happened with the camera industry. Nobody realized that a mobile could be a camera. So all the camera companies went bust. In your kind of business, in your line of business, what is your learning curve? How do you make sure that you're on the top of the trend? And how do you map what are the new trends that will take the audience your way? Firstly, I have to say that with the movies, there is no trend. You don't know what's going to work. Like, because it's a creative, and I mean, everything is a business. You want to monetize everything that you make, but it is very creatively driven. So you can't mathematically think about it when you're making the film. Uh, when you're marketing it and when you want to reach your viewers, yes, you think about business. But when you're making it, it is, it is more a gut thing. It's more a story-driven thing. It's what you choose. You're, you're a creative person as well, so you know that. So you see a story, it's your gut instinct. You don't follow the trend because there is no trend that you can follow. There will be a huge superhero film that will work and then five superhero films after that will not work. So there is no trend as such. You just tell stories. And currently, I feel like stories that are more rooted to our country, stories that are homegrown stories. Those are the stories that are uh, more inspiring, more exciting for people to watch. Um, there was a time when people wanted, you know, maybe in the 90s when people wanted to see New York in the movies and London and Switzerland and all of that. But I think now it's more about the content and what we are showing and what are we saying through the stories. So that is what I feel like something that connects with people because people are really intelligent and people are very smart. Yes, they want to be entertained, but they don't want to be entertained aimlessly. They want to be left with a thought. So I think stories that are more inspiring um, and, and stories that say something and are entertaining at the same time is what is more exciting and that's what we are working towards. Fantastic. In business, as every business, we always want our revenues to be more than our cost. Film industry is one place where many a times your costs are more higher than your revenues. Yes. How do you manage those situations and how do you do cost control? Because uh, it's a creative world, it's a creative life and every uh, things tend to go overboard in terms of your expenses and revenues might not match that. So in your line of business, how do you ensure that cost control really helps you? You know, I have not made very big budgeted films uh, right now and in fact, I have been you know, the person who's made all these big filmmakers shoot in very tight budgets. So a person like Karan, a person like Zoya, who are used to really big budgeted films, they have made 
um, their stories in really tight budgets. So we've kept it tight because we are very aware of the fact that this is not a completely mainstream film and hence you've got to make it tight so that you recover what you've spent and you get to make what you want to make. So, so you defy the rule that cost is directly proportional to quality. Even at lower cost, you can definitely absolutely. achieve quality. Sometimes I feel cost has nothing to do with quality. Yes, there are things that you need money for. Of course, if there is VFX in your film and if you're making that kind of a film, you need the kind of money and the support. But I don't think cost has anything to do with quality. Where do you think your industry is going? Because people are now uh, moving onwards to uh, platforms like Netflix, Amazon and all the other uh, OTT platforms which are showing you content sitting in the comfort of your home. In fact, now Jio has launched the concept of showing you the first yes. movie on the first day for show. So with these things happening, how do you think it will impact your industry? Like every industry has got trends changing in, fashion changing in. So how do you think it will impact you as a businesswoman? I'm doing some stuff with Netflix. It's already impacting in a very positive way because you can say things that you probably couldn't have said or made for a theatrical audience or for people who only watch movies in the theater. So I think having platforms like these OTT platforms is hugely beneficial to producers like us, to people who want to do all kinds of content, alternative, mainstream, everything. It also adds a different line of revenue for people making bigger films because you have your satellite cost and you have your digital cost and you have your movie cost, which digital didn't exist five years ago. So I think it's hugely beneficial. So do you run the entire movie in your mind before you actually go on flows and produce it? You can't do that. It just, I mean, you, you can put the team together, you can think of the math, you can think of all of that, but yes, you can think about the story, how it's going to be told, but it's actually a more of a director's vision on how the film is going to run, and they've seen the film through their eyes, so you just play along with the filmmaker. And so creating a team for a film production is like selecting an 11 people squad for a cricket team. How do you do that? How do you plan that? It's obviously keeping in mind with what your film, your director needs. A producer's job is mostly, and especially a creative producer, job is mainly to see and make sure that the director's needs are met in the best way possible. The director gets everything, the cushioning that he needs or she needs to make the film that they need. The film is marketed well, the film is distributed well, it's shown at the right places and that's what you can do as a producer. So do you do your financial closure before you launch the project? Yes, we try to do that. Yes. You try to do yes. that. And what is the pitch that you give to the people who back these projects? You know, with filmmaking, you have to you have to just make, make sure that they understand that the math works. So if you're spending an X amount making the film, so you have to make sure that they see the returns will be split between the different uh, avenues that they can exploit and then rest you just hope you know that that people come and watch the film and it works so it's sort of like a gamble also with movies you can't be 100 percent sure yes you can be sure to a certain extent that it'll recover this much but the rest of it it has to be it, it is a gamble what happens to the gap the deficit the friday are, decides that yeah every so friday decides yeah, that every so friday that's, decides that's the that. day which gives you butterflies yeah, in the stomach yeah, you get to know over the weekend or how the film is going to now that you have mastered the art of bringing the right people onto the table, the best teams, the best directors, the best actors, the best script, you uh, did films in Hindi. Now you are also looking at the regional language because most of the states in India have population than most of the countries abroad. So you are now aiming towards uh, doing a Tamil film. Uh, what makes you take uh, in that direction? Both Tamil and Telugu I am doing and I am a North Indian. So I had no idea before I joined and I have started working in the movies that the Tamil industry and the Telugu industry is that huge. I'm sure you know, like they're huge, the kind of movies that they make, their content is amazing. Their it's like a religion is, there. Yeah, I mean, and once I discovered that and I met some very interesting filmmakers down south, both in Tamil and Telugu, I was like, we have to do something in this languages and I have to try and work with these filmmakers and that's what I'm currently working on. What is that one objective that you try to achieve from doing what you're actually doing today? I would love to say peace of mind, mm -hmm. but there is no peace of mind, honestly. I mean, I would love to um, be able to get that gratification after going through the process that you go through in making a film with your writer, then with your director, then with the guy who's financing the film, and then the whole team and the actors. The gratification that you get at the end of it, I think that's worth everything that you go through. What do you find as the risk elements in the industry that you're in? What are the risk elements according to you? You know, the, the risk element starts from the time you choose the script. 
So the minute you choose the script, it's a risk. You don't, you don't know where it's going to go. You don't know if an actor is going to come on board. You don't know if a funder is going to come on board. So it's a risk from the word go. The minute you decide this is what I want to make, it's a risk till the time it releases. So. And how valid do you think that a controversy is to add a flavor to your films? I think it's completely pointless. It, it, you don't believe in that? I completely don't believe in that. What kind of messages would you like to give through your uh, cinema creations? I'd like to inspire people at some level and entertain them at, at another level because I think these are the only two things people are looking at when they come to watch movies. So ultimately you started your career with uh, events, with NDTV, Barkha, that show. Yeah, that was a very small very internship. Very small yeah. internship at the tender age of uh, 17. I'm sure that's yeah. the backbone of the experience that you're utilizing today as a skill set. Yeah. You are now ventured into events also, although I consider movie making also as an event management, yeah. which gets captured on camera and converts into a three hours or two hours movie. So you are actually getting into the wedding segments of events. Uh, what do you intend achieving uh, in that segment? So I have a company called uh, the Dhoom Dham Weddings that I co-own with my best friend Tanya Ghavri, who's a leading celebrity stylist. And we started this four years ago with just like we both wanted to do something together because she does her styling with movies and celebrities and I do my films. But we wanted to come together and do something together. And we started this concept called the Dhoom Dham Weddings, which is a company that we run together, which curates trunk shows for... Um, for any sort of festivities which is weddings and celebrations and the country constantly has celebrations. So we do these trunk shows pan India. It started as something we did out of fun but now it's it's uh, doing well for us and I plan to continue it and take it to a bigger heights. What the is future. the stress level differences in both the activities that you do the wedding events as well as the film industry shoots? Oh, it's very different. Uh, film industry is um, you, you don't know what is going to happen the next day. While with this, there is a you, you're more in control of things. You know how you want to plan it, who you want to get on board, what is it going to be like. So you're more in control of things as opposed to with movies. Sometimes you're not in control of things. They have their own life. Yeah. In the activity of filmmaking, when you're uh, dealing with 50 people, actually they are not 50 people. They are 50 egos. Yeah. So as a producer, how do you manage and maintain those egos? Firstly, you try and choose a team which is less egoistic and understands that filmmaking is a collaborative process because if one person is missing the whole film falls flat whether it's the cameraman the editor anybody so it's a collaborative process and you try and work with like-minded people but even then if there are like it is with a family or with a with any kind of group that you're working with you figure it out through the process you understand each other you you make people understand and that's what a producer's job is it's one of those thankless jobs but that's what the job is you make sure everybody's happy at all times at the end of the conversation i would like to ask you was becoming a producer accidental, incidental or a well-planned strategy? It was not a well-planned strategy at all. I can't even call it accidental. It was, I think, more incidental because it is something that, that I realized I could be good at and I decided to give it a chance. And once it happened, this is what I want to do and I want to continue doing it. So, Ashi, what's the way forward from here? Uh, the way forward is to find more stories, to be able to make more movies, to get opportunities from the people in the industries to make more movies and yeah, to entertain. What inspires you? Uh, a lot of people inspire me and I'm not talking just from the film industry. Mm -hmm. Just people, situations inspire me, but just stories that I hear about, like right now talking to you was quite inspiring and I'd love to know more about you. So just meeting people, their stories, something that you want to put out there. Yeah, that's what inspires me. And what me. motivates you? What motivates me is I want to be able to achieve what I myself didn't imagine that I could achieve. Fantastic. So friends, that's uh, Ashi Dua here. It's all our wholehearted duas for her further journey. And I'm sure people like her make India proud. This is uh, an episode which will definitely inspire, especially those people who want to look at film industry as a sector of entrepreneurship. And uh, keep watching us, keep watching Inspiring Conversations. Our only purpose and intention is to motivate you and educate you from people who have been there and done that. Thank you. Once again, this is Agnello Rajesh from St. Angelo's VNC Ventures. And we love to host Inspiring Conversations with the social initiative to help you understand how business can be done so easy. St. Angelo's VNCT Ventures is one of the largest villa developers in India. Brings to you the White Villas Shahapur. Located in Shahapur, which is declared as no chemical zone and green zone and is very near from Mumbai and Thane.
Our site is located just 3 kilometers away from local railway station. The white villas are designed by Ms. Suzanne Khan and are the tallest villas in India at 29 feet tall. Zero maintenance as the villas are maintained by Trip Villas, a Singapore-based company. Having designs of the Greek architecture, the highlights of this masterpiece include American shingles, collar fittings, jotan panes and designer tiles. 3 BHK wonderful villa comes with power backup facility, an arrow water purification plant, clubhouse, gym, banquet hall and a swimming pool are an add-on benefit. So grab the opportunity and do your villa booking today. Call us on 9011-223344 or visit us on www.savvglobal.com.